Kip up. Hey guys, it's Will with Exposing the IWC, and today I'm coming at you with a different series of videos. So on this past Monday Night Raw, they're starting a lot of storylines. In this video, we're going to be breaking down the top five storylines on Monday Night Raw. Now, what are the parameters for this ranking? Well, the storylines that make the most sense and are more compelling will be higher. Simple as that. I will also be taking into account how the internet wrestling community reacts to these stories. This is going to be so much fun. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. All right, here we go. The top five storylines on Monday Night Raw. Number five, Uncle Howdy is returning. On Raw last night, the White Rabbit teases have returned. Before the show and during the commercial break, the lights dimmed and they played a song by Marty Amado called Nightbird. Very similar to the stuff they were doing when Bray Wyatt was returning. Now, Taylor Rotunda, aka Bo Dallas, has been under contract for a while now. It appears he will be returning with the Uncle Howdy character, which was the character he was supposed to play with his brother before his untimely passing. I'm interested to see what they do with this character and how far they take it. How long will these teases last? When will he pop up first? What's the purpose? What's the goal? What's the first feud? What's the overall idea? It'll be interesting to see what they do with this. There was also a glitch on the screen during Bronson Reed's promo. So they're going all out with these teases. Originally, the plan was for Bray Wyatt, Bo Dallas, and Alexa Bliss to all work together. This is going back to 2022. I'm wondering if Alexa Bliss will also join Bo Dallas in the storyline and kind of continue Bray Wyatt's vision, whatever that was, without him. It'll be interesting to see what they do. I'm interested to see what this is during the Triple H era. Will it be awesome or a train wreck? It can be tough to do the spooky stuff in pro wrestling because ultimately the bell has to ring and you have to run ropes, you know? But we'll see what happens. Moving on to number four, The Rock and Cody. Now, some of you might be saying, wait a minute, The Rock and Cody number four, isn't that kind of low? Well, here's the thing. We don't know when this feud is actually going to happen. The Rock is going away. I assume he'll be back during the SummerSlam build, maybe? And that's months away. So it's hard to get interested and hyped up about a storyline when there's a big gap between now and his return. The Rock wants to challenge Cody for the title at some point this year. I'm assuming SummerSlam. I really want to know what they'll be doing in the meantime. The problem with doing this kind of build where you announce early on what the match will be, everything that happens in between now and The Rock's return is now filler, which is why I kind of wish they wouldn't have done this. The Rock handed Cody something. I'm guessing in kayfabe is to watch that his dad pawned to pay for Cody's acting school classes. According to Cody in a post-show conference for Mania, Triple H, Bruce Prichard, and Nick Khan gifted him a watch that was similar to the one that his dad pawned. I don't think it's the actual watch, but uh, I think in kayfabe, that's what it was. It was the watch that his dad pawned for his acting classes. Honestly, The Rock and Roman will be off TV for a while. So number four is generous, okay? This story won't be picking up for a while. Okay, number three, the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour. We're here, folks. We finally arrived. Get on the bus. Get on the train. We are on the Revenge Tour Express. Like I've been saying for months, the second Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley were done with their feud, Liv Morgan would get her time to shine. She attacked Rhea Ripley backstage. She threw a chair right at her head. I don't know if that was the original plan or something went wrong there. Some people believe the chair may have slipped out of her hand. I don't think so. But whatever it was, it was effective. Liv Morgan wants her pound of flesh and Rhea Ripley is on the receiving end of it. Oh boy, how far is this going to go? There are some who believe this feud is going all the way to SummerSlam. I'm not so sure. 
it'll be interesting how they play this because Liv Morgan has to be the babyface here, but Rhea Ripley is so beloved. So how does the crowd dynamic work? I actually believe Liv Morgan has a better chance to receive crowd support against Rhea Ripley than Becky Lynch did. Her anger towards Rhea Ripley is justified and because her name isn't as big and she hasn't had the success of a Becky Lynch, she can better play the underdog role and get that sympathy from the crowd. I'm interested to see how they tell this story and if it continues beyond backlash. I have a feeling it's going to be on site for Liv Morgan from this point forward. All right, let's move on to number two. The second best storyline on Monday Night Raw is Drew versus CM Punk. Drew McIntyre made a critical error at WrestleMania. He should have went about his business. He had to rub it in CM Punk's face. That hubris, that obsession cost him. It cost him everything. And of course, instead of looking in the mirror, he blamed CM Punk for losing the title. Drew calls Damian Priest a bondage undertaker, which was hilarious. And he says when it comes to CM Punk, it's on site. His hatred for CM Punk is blinding him and it's only gotten worse. CM Punk showed up in the main event to screw Drew McIntyre. So it's clear to me that regardless of title, this is the top feud on Raw. And this will be one of the top feuds going into SummerSlam, I feel. I believe The Rock versus Cody and Drew versus CM Punk will be the top two male feuds heading into that PLE. At WrestleMania, he had no one to blame but himself. But last night on Raw, that was definitely a CM Punk thing. His opportunity for the title was lost because of CM Punk for sure. That's all on CM Punk. Both of these two are great on the mic, so I can't wait to see this feud kick into high gear. And finally, the number one story on the Raw after Mania, the WWE Draft. I am so excited for this. This is the time of the year where creative shakes things up. We get new matchups, new feuds, and new stories. Folks are being called up from NXT, people who aren't being used going down to NXT. Roxanne Perez and Ilya Dragunov were shown off to the crowd last night to hype up the draft and show folks what they can expect come draft day if these people are called up. It's truly an exciting time of the year. There's two nights of the draft. The Raw edition will take place on April 29th. I'm hoping they really make it sports based. I want all the talent to be out there sitting down and when they get drafted, they walk up there, they put on the hat and they say a speech or something, you know, I really want them to make it like a real draft with all the bells and whistles. Draft will take place before backlash, but all of the backlash storylines will be relevant to the current roster. So if Rhea Ripley is scheduled to face Liv Morgan at backlash, it won't matter if they're drafted to separate brands, the match will go on, right? So again, the storylines for Backlash are based on the current roster breakdown. I'm looking forward to see who gets drafted. I think Ilya Dragunov, there's nothing left for him to do down there. So I'm hoping he gets called up. I'm hoping he gets drafted to one of the major brands. I freaking love the draft, man. What do I personally want to see from the draft? Get Bianca Belair far away from damage control, please. Put her on the same show as Rhea, whether that's SmackDown or Raw. I think it's time to call up Dijax, and there's some women that could get called up for sure, like JC Jane has been ready. People like that. We'll see how it all shakes out. Very much looking forward to it. All right, guys, so that's my top five storylines on Monday Night Raw right now. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Leave in the comments your rankings for the top five storylines. Talk to you later. Kip up.